evening, Gateway Church members, parishioners, and to all of our virtual partners. I'm so glad you've joined me again this Tuesday for another edition of Transformational Bible Study. Today, we will conclude our March series entitled, God's Voice. This is part four. Now, last week, I spoke to you on the topic, I Can't Hear God. It was a very important topic because many times God is speaking, but we can't hear him. But the question is, after you hear him, then what? Well, that goes into what we're going to talk about today. In this session, I want to talk to you about obedience, the unusual places of purpose. Obedience to God's voice will most certainly take you to a different place, and sometimes even to unusual places. When you can be assured that no matter where God's voice leads you, he will navigate you toward his purpose and he will provide for you and bless you there. Oftentimes, we preach sermons on obedience and those sermons are focused on backsliding or significant falls from grace. However, we should take a look at obedience in the context of choices to trust God or not. Let's first look at God's interaction with a man named Abram. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, the Bible reads, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and from your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who you bless, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Now Paul comes back and writes to the church of Galatia concerning Abram, whose name has now been changed to Abraham. And he writes in verse 6 of Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 through 9, So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations, he said, will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. Now, I want to start with talking about place. Obedience being a place. A place can be a demographic location. It can be a mental state or a spiritual posture or position. In Adam and Eve's experience with God, when God asked, where are you? It was not only a demographic location God was inquiring about, it was also a spiritual posture or a spiritual position as well. Because you know, God knows when things have shifted. As we shall discover in this session, no matter what place you have found yourself in at this moment in your life, you have to reposition or reposture yourself in obedience to the place where God has determined is the place for your breakthrough, for your calling, and for your deliverance. The key to any kingdom success, my dear friend, and any guarantee of provision is obedience. Type that in obedience. As we approach the month of April and the observance of events that led up to uh, Jesus' resurrection, what we have discovered is that these events unfolded in different places of obedience. What we must realize also is that like Jesus, dying to yourself is a place of obedience that will usher your life into an ending and a new beginning. Look at our first power thought, which reveals a theological truth that should resonate throughout this evening's study. And it reads, when you come to the end of yourself, you find the beginning of God. 
the beginning of Abram, whose name was later changed to Abraham by God, the beginning of Abram's relationship with God was his ability to hear God's voice. Without this having occurred, that too was a place. Without this having occurred, the rest of the story of the Bible would have ceased to exist as we know it. Hearing God's voice, my dear friend, is key. It is, it is, it is not only key, but it is crucial in each and every one of our lives. But what is also crucial is the place of obedience. Places matter. Why don't you type that in? inside the context. Places matter. You know why? Because God made places before he made people. Think about that for a moment. God made places before he made people. Now when we look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it is recorded that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In essence, God created these environments or these places to position the crown of his creation, which is mankind, for his purpose. So places come before people. You have to understand now, place is very important. Every time God talks about obedience, it involves a place. Everything God wants for you is somewhere but it is not everywhere. It is only in the place that God has predestined you to be in order for you to acquire, in order for it to manifest what God wants in your life for your life. Now hear me, obedience takes you to places of purpose and provisions. This is a good place for our second power thought, which says, your provisions does not follow you, but rather it is waiting for you at the place of obedience. Turn with me with, it, with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. While you're turning there, I want to state that power thought once again. Your provision does not follow you, but rather it is waiting for you at the place of obedience. In the book of Luke, it points to one of the great realities that God has revealed the great certainty of blessings that's waiting for you and I if we obey his voice to transition to a specific place. It could be a place spiritually, it could be a place of relationship, or it can be a place, like in this case, of demographics. Now, read with me. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, let me stop right there. I wish that people would have that same kind of hunger when they would get to the place where they're pressing in, they're pressing their way toward church to hear the word of God, where they're pressing their way home so they can be a part of Bible study that we're doing here on, on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. But you know what? We live in a day where people aren't pressing toward the word anymore. I want to encourage you to encourage others to press toward the word. Now let me continue reading. He was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. In essence, they were finished doing whatever they were assigned to do that day. But there was a problem, and we're going to get to that. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, that was also predestined, he asked him to put out a little from the land and also, in essence, push away from the shoreline. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Verse 4 says, and when he had finished speaking, he said, now I want you to underline that, he said, who is speaking? God is speaking. It's God with us through Jesus Christ. He said to Simon, put out into the deep or go out into the deep and let down your nest for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But... At your word, here he is, obedience, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. Oh my God, my God, my God. Listen, if you didn't get this, if you're in the place of obedience, 
The provisions, the exceeding and the abundant blessings of God is where that place of obedience is. All you need to understand, when you're walking with God, you may not be able to see it. You may not be able to feel it. But if you just go where God tells you to go, if you just get to the place spiritually that God wants you to get, if you just go and be present where God needs you to be present, His presence will provide for you in every area of need. Now hear me tonight. Not only that, this place of obedience was where Peter received his call to ministry. Wow. On a boat where he had suffered previous failure is where he found not only the power of God moving, but his call to another profession. He would no longer be fisher, a fisherman, but a fisher of men. Now, let's connect this story to praying and hearing God's voice. And there are three observations I want you to consider tonight. Number one, it wasn't about what the disciples were doing. It was about where they were doing it. Are you with me so far? You see, launching into the deep was critical. It wasn't about what they were doing. They were fishing. But it was about where they were doing it. They were too close to the shoreline and not far enough out. You see, we don't need shoreline Christians. Shoreline Christianity won't bring you into your life with God and it won't bring you into the things that God has predestined in your life for your life. You listen, obedience to the voice of God will require you to launch out into the deep. Launching out into the deep requires double efforts and the willingness to take greater risks. It is, listen, it is moving beyond your comfort zones and what you are accustomed to. The deep is the place of personal insecurity and requires complete reliance on the Lord. Launching out into the deep may require a greater spiritual commitment on your part. The deep, the place of God's predestined purpose for your life is where the best catch can be found. There in the deep, you can catch a new vision for your life. There in the deep, you can catch a new purpose in your life. There in the deep, you can catch an elevated sense of courage to commit to your unknown future that is yet to reveal itself to you. Why don't you type it inside the comments, in the deep. In the deep is where you find your best catch. You're going to catch something from God. Here's the second revelation I got out of that verse of scripture with Jesus and the disciples. Number two, don't try to pray God into your place of disobedience and into your place of limitation. Let me say it again. Don't try to pray God into your place of disobedience and into your place of limitations because you don't want to move out of yours to fit in to where God needs you. We need what I have described as try again obedience. Type that in. Try again obedience. Here is another observation in Peter's experience of obeying God's voice. In the next verse, verse 5, the writer said that Simon answered Jesus and said, Master, we have toiled all night long and haven't caught anything at all. But at your word, I will let down my net again. In essence, this was try again obedience. Now, this is one of the problems we have in the church today. God tells us to do something that we may have already tried, and instead of doing it again at his command, we start talking <laughs> instead of listening. We start talking about what we've already done. Listen, God already knew you tried it, but you failed. God already knew that you've already done all of the things that you thought were critical for you to succeed. He saw where you weren't walking in his will. He saw where you weren't walking in his timing. Listen, don't you know that he knows what you've already done and failed at? If you don't know, you better know now. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. He wants you to do your work over, but in the place where he and how he commands you to do it. Because it is there that he will, he will bless you in this time at the unusual and the unlikely place 
of your obedience. Now, here's the third thing I got out of the scripture. Defeat and failure will get you where God needed you to be. <laughs> wow. Listen, think about that for a moment. Have God ever allowed you to be defeated? I'm sure he has because he has with me. Has God ever allowed you to fail? Of course he's allowed you to fail. But guess what? When God allow you to be defeated, when God allow you to fail, it is exactly where God needs you to be. And I'm going to share with you why. We have all been struck down at one point or another in our, in our obedience with God or disobedience with God. Listen, we have failed him in one way or another. At some point in our life, we just kind of just wasn't in alignment with God. You want to know what was happening then? We either fail when, number one, we impulsively act on right commitment based on emotions. I'm going to say it again because you need to get this right inside of your spirit. We either, we, we, we either fall or fail when we impulsively act on right commitment that's based on, and I should say, wrong emotions or emotions. Case in point, Peter pulling out his sword in the Garden of Gethsemane and cutting off Malchus' ear. His motive was to defend God, or to defend Jesus, rather, but his emotional act was wrong. Here's the second reason why we fail. We either fail when we attempt to do God's work by human strength. There's a huge difference, my dear friend, between acting in our own strength versus acting in the power of God. Or we either fail when we're more concerned about what others think than what God is thinking. Or, lastly, we either fail when we impetuously attempt to do God's work at the wrong time. And let me tell you something. That's very problematic and it is very very popular. People are often moving ahead of God. They're not waiting on God. And one of the things God has commanded of us is to wait on Him. He may have commanded you to do something. He may have even mandated you to do something. He may have anointed you to do something. But it might not be time yet. Do you remember David when David was anointed to be king over Israel? David, David did not rush off to take Saul off of his throne. You know what David did? David went back to tending a few sheep. Because even though he was anointed, called out, and chosen, it was not yet time. Now let me continue. Despite these failures of faith that we may have experienced, we must understand that our failures in God are never final. Type that in. Your failures in God are never final. Why? Because God can use our defeats and our failures so that we, listen, as a result of our disobedience. If we have failed, if we are defeated, it's because we have, we have disobeyed God in some area of our life. But guess what? God can use our defeats and our failures that are a result of our disobedience. Now, here's another powerful fact that you need to embrace. And I need Satan to hear this because he, he have to admit it even if he won't admit it. The devil doesn't know how God will use your disobedience until it manifests. <laughs> All things, the Bible says, whether good or bad, work together for your good, for those who are called according to God's purpose. Watch. What we do know is this. We know that God has warned us in Ephesians chapter 404, verse 27. I'm going to paraphrase. He says, give no place to the devil. In essence, don't give the devil a foothold in your life. But if you do, hear me well tonight. If you do, if you slip up, God will use it as a mentoring moment. It will be a place where you learn a very tough but needed lesson. A place where Satan's strategies are used to accomplish God's ultimate intention for your life. Listen, I'm going to tell you now, God never wastes a good failure. <laughs> God will never waste a defeat inside of your life. God will use all things and he'll work it to his ultimate good and for his ultimate intentions inside of your life. Now, 
I want to conclude tonight's session with this. I want to encourage you to embrace the fact that your obedience will take you to some unusual places of purpose, destiny, and blessings. I want you to type this into your comments. Someplace, somewhere, in God's design, it had your name on it. Someplace in God's design, God's will has your name on it. You better understand and you better embrace it with all of your heart. But you need to also know this, it doesn't come easy. It comes at a cost. But when God tells you to move, my dear friend, just move. Listen, I'm going to give you a few examples of this through some of our historical patriots on just moving on God and how God can use unusual places to unfold his purpose inside of your life. Take David, for example. David had to leave the comforts of home to go to a place God predetermined to battle a giant to get to the kingdom that he would one day rule. Look at Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, accused of attempted rape in Potiphar's house, and cast into prison to get to the place that he would become the prince of Egypt. And finally, Jesus. Oh my gosh. Jesus had to go to Jerusalem where he would be betrayed, he would be beaten within an inch of death, and hung on a cross to die so that he could rise again and become the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, mighty God. And through his place of obedience, the cross, we became the righteousness of God. My dear friend, tonight I hope you are embracing this, this conversation on obedience. Obedience, people of God, is a place where God allows his power and his sovereignty to shine. It is a place where we discover God's favor in the midst of the storms. It is a place where God's favor, even he does God's favor find us even in the failures of our lives. Obedience, my dear friend, tonight is a place where your experiences collide with God's power. And your experience will experience a release of God's blessing and you will witness the incredible work of God's grace. Hands down, my dear friend. Obedience. It will take you to some unusual places. But in those places, you will be blessed. In those places... God will provide for you. In those places, God will take you to another level. In those places, God will call you out, choose you from among many. He will anoint you for service in his kingdom. I hope tonight's study has blessed you as we're concluding our study for the night. And I pray that you have been informed, inspired, and transformed because as your pastor teacher, my assignment, as it always is, is for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith. Well, I hope you've been blessed tonight. I sure have. I needed that. I needed to hear that word tonight myself. And listen, go back over it. Read it again. Do some further studies on obedience and how God's obedience will lead you to some unusual places. But those places, when you look at it in the end, will result in the wonderful grace of God's blessings over your life. Well, I want to pray God's blessings over your life right now as we're going to end our study tonight. So if you will, bow in a word of prayer with me. Heavenly Father, our dear Lord, we thank you right now as we, each one of us, come to you. We're asking you, dear God, to grace us with your presence each and every day. We ask you, dear Father, to strengthen us in our obedience. Each of us come to a point in our lives where we dare to ask you to reveal your will to us. Father, we pray that you put us in a place, dear God, of acceptance in a place of obedience to what you revealed to us. Help us to walk in it, dear Father. It may not be what we want, but it will surely be what we need in order for us to live life fully and that we may have an abundant life because we are fully invested in you. Dear God, tonight I pray that you help us, dear God, to realize that anything you bring into our lives and anything you reveal to us is for our good. Thank you, God even for the things that we do not understand. 
God, give us a spirit of acceptance and a heart open to your movement in our lives. Allow us, dear God, to let your love surround us and cast out any fears and any doubts that try to make its way into our faith. Help us to live in your love, dear Father. Help us to accept your will for our lives. And Father, give us the proper response to your revelation, dear God. And dear Father, may we trust in the way you're urging us to go. Father, we thank you. We trust you with all of our hearts. We depend upon you. Touch every family, touch every child, every, every neighbor, every community, dear God, we pray. God, open doors that were once closed for us and the doors that should not open for us. Close them and close them tight and give us an understanding that it wasn't for us, that there's something better. God, I pray for healing over your people. I pray, oh God, that you give us that mind that's, that's filled with your peace, that's filled with your love, that's filled with your joy. And Father, as we go throughout this week, God, make our way straight. Rebuke the hands of the enemy. Foil the strategies of Satan. And God, bring us into your purpose and your destiny for our life, even in this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you once again for joining for another edition of Transformational Bible Study. And you know what? As I always say, you are the most awesome people in all of the world. Lady Kathy and I, we love you dearly. And there's nothing you can do about it. And again, I will see you back here. Same place, same time next week for another study in God's Word as we go deeper, stronger, and better. God bless you. See you.